Hey y'all, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and today on cameras and ice water, I want to talk about three things. The Olympus debacle that just occurred, a trip I went on with Phil Thatch, and I want to talk to you about Adrian. Olympus, the cliche statement is Olympus has fallen. <laughs> Olympus technically hasn't went away yet. They're entering into an agreement with another firm in Japan to sell the camera division to them. And by December 31st, they want to have that finalized and have it sold to this JIP group. This is really a good thing since Olympus has struggled to make money with cameras for a long time. And in the press release I read, it said they lost money for the last three straight years in cameras trying to figure out a way to make the cameras more profitable. And we saw that with this, what, the latest release of what was it, the OMD Mark V, I think. It went from a metal-bodied camera to plastic, and that was a maneuver probably to try and save money, you know, to make the camera profitable again. Well, it didn't work. So I'm thinking that this company that's going to acquire this Olympus camera brand is probably going to go in there and restructure the system probably cull a bunch of the cameras that are not really profitable and hang on to three or four that are and you'll probably see olympus cameras for a time to come there is a very strong niche market for olympus cameras a lot of people enjoy using them especially in the asian market they're very popular in the asian community the whole southeast asia down into the uh what do you call that um oceana we're all like Malaysia and the Philippines and Micronesia and all those little countries. They all seem to love Olympus. So you, sh you should see them to continue under this other brand. They're just being absorbed. Like GE literally just sold their entire appliance division, including the logo, to a company called Hair, H-A-I-E-R. And they got it all. You know, they're still making GE stoves. It's just with a different name on the company, on the building outside. So I expect that to be what happens here. That, like I said, they'll probably pare down the offerings, and you know, reduce it down to what to the items that they do sell that are profitable. And you'll probably see like that big flagship camera kind of go away, and maybe you know the next most expensive one. If they don't move many of them, it might fade into non-existence, and then you might see some new cameras. Maybe that pen will come out like everybody's wanting. Where Darren Miles talked about it with the improvements to the pen. You know, you might just see that. Don't 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 count them completely out yet, because they didn't say that they were bankrupting and selling the assets. They're selling the camera manufacturing division to somebody else. So that company is thinking there's enough profit in that facility and equipment to buy it all. That means they're probably going to take that equipment and attempt to make cameras and sell them with it. At least that's that would make sense. You know, if you're going to sell the division. You know, if somebody's going to buy the division, that's that's the most logical solution. The next thing that we did was me and Phil and Heather, Teresa went with us for a little while even, met down at uh, uh, Coolidge Park in downtown Chattanooga and done some photography last night. We, we tried to get some photos of some kids here and there on bikes and stuff. And Phil got some photos. I got one. And then we got, uh, we went down to the river's edge and I got a nice... Uh, 20 millimeter i took my 20 that's all i shot with yesterday carried a bag full of lenses and ran the 20 mil the whole time <laughs> never fails i should i should learn my lesson and just take the camera and the lens that's on it and just go because i keep doing that <laughs> anyway i got a, i got a few river photos you know i got i got this one with the two bridges and then i went on the other side of the walnut street bridge with phil and heather and got down at the water's edge and got this photo now, I kind of like it, but I like the one with the two bridges better, I believe. And then the, stain, the rain started moving in. So I decided to pull up stakes and sprint for the truck, which was probably the better part of a half a mile from where we was. It, it was in between a quarter and a half a mile. We'd walked a good ways from my parking lot. And then I got about halfway and grabbed this photo of the sky on the way to the truck, just handheld, just pointed the camera up and took a photo of it because i thought it was real pretty 
And then Phil and Heather stuck around till dark. And I'm curious to see when his video comes out what they actually ended up with. Because from the photos or from the text messages he sent me, it was going to be epic photos. He stuck around till the rain actually started. And they got into blue hour real good where I just erred on the side of caution. And I went early, so I missed it. Well, it paid off for them. They got some beautiful photos from the best I could tell. Third thing I want to talk about is an email I got from a fellow named Adrian. He lives in Mexico. Adrian, I was doing the photo challenges and all at once, Adrian's emails started populating in my inbox. And there were emails with several photos attached to each one. And I was like, okay, none of them fit the genre that we were doing in the photo challenges. So I wrote him back and I said, you know, can you give me some backstory? Well, he wrote back. And the reason that I want to share this with you is I want you to realize he's doing what I say at the end of all of my videos. Just get your camera out and go take a picture with it. As you can see with the photos that are flowing by while I talk here, they're just of his everyday life around him. But that's how documentary photographers get started. Documenting the world around you. I asked him if I could share the photos in a vlog, and he said, of course you can. And I said, how did you get into photography? He said, well, my mom used to take a lot of pictures of me when I was a kid. She, she feels, okay, um, English is not his first language, so be patient with me and him, because he's, he's wrote a very well-worded email for someone whose um, language, first language is not English. She fills three photo albums of 500 pictures each one, she died when I was six, and that's one of the things she left me. If you just do the rough math, he got about 1,500 photos from his mother up till he was about six years old. He said, that's the starting point of my first photo experiences that he can relate. He says, when I was 16, I used to have a very cheap phone. Actually, it is an OXO, like a 7-Eleven, but in Mexico. It had a terrible camera, and by the time, I was amazed on what other phones could do, like the iPhone 7 at that point. So I reached out to a friend of mine that used to have a small compact camera. I bought, he said, I bought it to her, which means he bought it from her. And it was a Nikon Coolpix 100. After a year or so, another friend gave me a Fujifilm Finepix S100. Almost a year after that, I bought my first DSLR, a Nikon D500. In 2018, he bought a Nikon D3300, and starting this year, he picked up a D750. So now he's got a D750. He's worked his way all the way up to that. I see how almost everybody who is getting started in photography will spend $1,000 on their first camera. I struggled a lot to buy his, okay, I'm gonna have to, I'm paraphrasing because of the, it's, it's a little broken here. He says, I struggle a lot to buy my first one for 700 pesos. That's like less than 50 bucks. He says, it's kind of funny looking back on it. He says, I like how old photos look and I'm not taking, I'm not talking about how film looks, just how they are. In other words, he likes the, he likes the look of the print, how they used to be document or how they used to document everyday life and to keep a register of time because time passes by and things change that's the beauty of it to be able to perceive those things changing even before it happens being able how your room used to look five being able to see how your room used to look five years ago and stuff like that documenting is just beautiful adrian estrella this is why I do my YouTube channel. This guy gets it. He's young. He struggled to buy his first camera, saved his money up, worked and come up with the money to buy his first camera. And now he's worked his way up all the way to an Icon D750, which is an excellent machine. And he's using it to document everyday life in Mexico. It warms my heart to know that there are other people out there like me that just want to document the world around them and be able to just save that for future generations to, to be able to see what life was like now. You know, if they document it on temporary media like their smartphone, then it's lost. Because if you don't print those smartphone photos, 
they're lost when the phone dies. They just are, or you leave them to, say, to free up space or whatever so you can put a movie on your phone. It's a sad reality we live in. Yes, smartphones are the most prolific pocket camera on earth, if I had to guess. There are more smartphone cameras in circulation than all of the DSLRs added up ever. I would, I'm probably right. <laughs> I haven't done that research, but with how pervasive smartphones have become, I'm going to say that I'm probably right. It would, it would greatly surprise me if they haven't outpaced regular cameras at this point. And the unfortunate reality of that is, is most of the photos that those cameras capture will be lost. They just won't, they'll be thrown away. So document the world around you it's worth it it's worth it like to adrian when he gets to be 60 years old he can pull these photos out and share them with the younger generation and show them what life was like when he was 15 or 20 years old if you don't take those photos now you won't have them then so that's what i wanted to say and i really 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 appreciated him sharing that with me and giving me permission to share it with you guys if you need inspiration to get your camera out and go take a picture with it, this is it. So with that, I appreciate y'all guys watching. If you haven't done it yet, the subscribe button's right over there. So is that like button. You know, you can give me that thumbs up, you can hit the little notification bell or all that jazz. So until next time, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And what am I gonna tell you to do? Get your camera out and go take a picture with it, all right? We'll see you later, bye-bye.